The big signings of the 2016 NBA free agency period are out of the way and it's time to revisit my NBA power rankings. You're watching the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. Greetings and welcome to the MJ Take here on Sports Fan Entertainment. I am your host, MJ, and today I'm going to unveil my 2016 NBA Power Rankings after the first week and a half, almost two weeks now, of the NBA free agency period for 2016. But before we get into that, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you didn't watch my last video, yes, this is now Sports Fan Entertainment. You see, I still have to get used to it. I almost said this is James Carter TV. This is Sports Fan Entertainment. I am your host, MJ, and this is the MJ Take, the first show of hopefully many to come here on the Sports Fan Entertainment YouTube channel. And I want to be really quick with this, but I want to thank you guys so much with your guys' just attention to that video that I put out. Uh, you know, 30% of my subscribers watched that video within the first 24 hours. I mean, that is incredible. And over 200 likes that video has right now. That tells me that whenever I have a video concerning the future of this channel, you guys listen. And I'm so grateful for that. But enough with the formalities. Let's get back to what we do best, and that is talk about sports on this channel. My power rankings are up. They can be found in the description box below. And I kind of said in the beginning that I've updated my power rankings. Well, I really haven't updated them because I've never had NBA power rankings until this moment. So why not debut it? These won't be updated until the preseason. So just sit back for three months and get over it. But... I think every month, maybe bi-weekly during the season, I'll update them. So here's what's going down. Number one, we have the Golden State Warriors. Duh. I mean, they signed Kevin Durant. They're the best team in the NBA. They were the best team in the NBA last season. This is something that I don't understand why other people don't understand. Even though they lost in the playoffs, you're damn right they lost in the playoffs. They lost in the finals. They were still a great team. Now, maybe not the best team of all time, but they were still a great team. You think Cleveland and San Antonio and OKC just let them win in the regular season? You think all of these teams just let them win in the regular season? No, they were a great team. What happened was Steph Curry stopped putting up 50, Klay Thompson stopped putting up 30, and they had problems going to the basket and scoring when they needed to because the jump shots weren't falling. Oh, I remember that gruesome Game 7. Steph Curry having these open threes and just missing. They weren't falling. But they were a great team in January, February, and they're still a great team, and they're number one in my power rankings. That's where they deserve to be. That's where they are. Number two, the NBA champions. The Cleveland Cavaliers sit at number two. There's no debate there. Unfortunately for them, Literally no signings in free agency. They re-signed Richard Jefferson. They lost Matthew Dellavedova. Who cares? I think Matthew Dellavedova is one of the most overrated players in the NBA. Yeah, he's a scrappy defender, but I think he's a liability. I don't care about him. So bring in a nice three-point shooting point guard that you can actually have in there. And a nice defender, you know, a nice 3 and D point guard that I think you could bring in that will be better than Dellavedova because I'm not a big fan of Matthew Della Vadova. Third, we have the San Antonio Spurs. You know, they signed Pau Gasol. They had Tim Duncan retired, but honestly, at this stage in their careers, Pau Gasol is an upgrade over Tim Duncan. Pau Gasol averaged a double-double last season, really one of his better seasons defensively in the NBA, so he's really going to add a lot to the Spurs. The question is, can they knock off Golden State? To which the answer, I'm afraid, is probably no, but we shall see. Number four, we have the Los Angeles Clippers, who are still a very big threat, and I really consider putting them at number three ahead of the San Antonio Spurs. I just can't do it yet because the Clippers honestly haven't earned that. You know, Blake Griffin was really injured for a lot of last year, so we have to consider that as well. But the Clippers, they haven't made it to, have they made it to the Western Conference Finals? I don't think they have, you know, in the last 50 years. So why am I going to give them credit, you know, saying that they're better than the Spurs now? They No, they don't deserve that. The Spurs deserve to be ahead of the Clippers now. But if the season
season progresses, it wouldn't surprise me if I end up putting the Clippers over the Spurs. But for now, courtesy will rule, and I give the Spurs courtesy over the Los Angeles Clippers. But the Clippers are still a threat. And if they can get to the Western Conference Finals, maybe they give the Warriors some trouble. My question is, who's going to guard Kevin Durant? I mean, Chris Paul's a pretty good defender. I think he can do a pretty good job on Steph Curry. Who's going to guard Durant? I don't think there's a person, a human being, on the Clippers that can guard Kevin Durant. Uh, now we move on to number five. And this might surprise some of you. We have the Toronto Raptors. That's right, the Raptors are sitting at number five. Guys, they won 56 games last year. They have Damari Carroll, who was injured for most of last year. They had a very good draft, in my opinion, drafting Jakob Pertl, my sixth-ranked prospect in this 2016 NBA draft. They also drafted... Drafted Pascal Siakam. I think these guys are going to add a little bit to their front court depth. And also, you had Jonas Valanciunas, who had his best season yet in the NBA. He's going to come back even better for the Raptors. Kyle Lowry's coming off his best season ever. DeMar DeRozan's coming off his best season ever. This is still very much a team to be afraid of. I think they're going to give the Cleveland Cavaliers issues and troubles in next year's Eastern Conference. Finals. If Kevin Love finally, it, it cannot. I mean, if Kevin Love cannot find some sort of role in the offense, consistent role. I, I mean, I'll still pick the Cavs to go to the finals. Like, don't get me wrong. But I think they could give them some serious trouble. So just keep an eye on that. We have the Memphis Grizzlies sitting at number six. That's right, number six. Remember, Marc Gasol was injured for a lot of last season. And now these power rankings, they're not taking into account injury at this juncture. I expect for him to be healthy at the start of the season. And if he is, I think the Memphis Grizzlies are the fourth seed in the Western Conference. They finally added a legitimate Small forward, three-point shooting, small forward, uh, finally. I mean, they've had guys like Tayshawn Prince. You know, when Tayshawn Prince is your scorer on the outside, on the perimeter, you have issues. Now you have a legitimate player in Chandler Parsons. If he can stay healthy, he's going to make a big impact for the Memphis Grizzlies, and they're high for me. I have him number six. Then we have a couple Eastern Conference teams. We have the Indiana Pacers, who I think have a hell of a five-man starting roster, assuming Al Jefferson can be a decent player, and I think he will be. And they have the Boston Celtics, who uh, signed out Horford and free agency are looking like they're going to be a 50-plus win team. But I'm not sure how much better they are than the Pacers. I mean, I don't think they're better than the Pacers right now. So I have the Pacers over them just because the Pacers have that superstar in Paul George that can carry your team a little farther. And they have a really rising talent in Miles Turner, the guy that really came on last year at the end of last season. So I really like the Pacers over the Celtics right now. Hey, But hey, the Celtics will be happy with being the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. I'm sure of that. You're going to win more games, but you may not see a huge jump in terms of seeding. Number nine, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder. I get it. They lost Kevin Durant. I say, who cares? You have Russell Westbrook. You have Victor Oladipo. You have Ersan Ilyasova. You have DeMontis Sabonis. You have Ennis Cantor. And you have Steven Adams. That is a playoff team in the Western Conference. Even in the Western Conference. I mean, you're talking about Westbrook, who is going to probably average over 28 points per game, probably average over 8 assists per game, probably over 7 rebounds per game, PER over 30. Expect that. Really going to be a superstar for this team. Lead this team to the playoffs. I have no question about that. Just ask yourself this question. Okay, who has a better team? The Thunder or the Trail Blazers, right? Russ Westbrook is better than Damian Lillard. But that's just off the bat. Victor Oladipo is a little bit worse than Sajid McCollum. In terms of the small four position, we have to see. But I'd give that edge to the Blazers. But then you have the inside. You have Ennis Cantor and Steven Adams over whoever the hell the Blazers have at their front court that given night. The Thunder also have a better coach in Billy Donovan. Uh, barely, but a better coach in Billy Donovan over Terry Stotts. And actually, I feel very comfortable with that because Terry Stotts never made the Western Conference Finals, especially in his first year. Billy Donovan did that. So you're talking about the Thunder. They're just a better team. And the Thunder, I mean, and the Trailblazers, excuse me, were, what, the fifth or sixth seed in the West? So the Thunder will be fine. They're still going to be a playoff team. I have them being a playoff team. And we round out the top ten with the Atlanta Hawks signed Dwight Howard in free agency lost Al Horford 
Dwight Howard is a better rebounder and a better defender, but a damn worse scorer. So you're right there, but I think it's pretty much a wash. Now the problem is, you also lost Jeff Teague. Now Dennis Schroeder is ascending, but I don't think he's quite at Jeff Teague's level quite yet. So I think that's a little bit of a net loss. I liked Torian Prince, the guy you drafted this year, and I still like Mike Budenholzer as your head coach. He'll get the most out of your a basketball team and you'll still be a playoff team. My question is how high? This puts you at about the fifth seed in the East. I like that number, you're sitting at number 10. Quickly though, let's talk about the other rankings. We have the Trailblazers at number 11. We have the new and the old New York Knicks at number 12. The Detroit Pistons at number 13. The Houston Rockets at number 14. You have James Harden, who's really going to be more of a volume scorer next season. Hopefully he can play some sort of defense. But I think with he uh, and also the other guys that they have there, the shooters that they've, they've signed, I think they signed Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson, and Nene. I think that's good enough to be a 7th or 8th seed in the West. Utah Jazz, I think they're really going to make the playoffs this season. The, the, the past season, they were about a couple games off. They went 40, I think they went 40 and 42, maybe 41 and 41. But then this season, uh, this is Gordon Hayward's contract season. I think he's going to ball out, try to really get a max contract next season. Derek Favors is taking another leap. Rudy Gobert taking another leap. I think they're going to be a playoff team. I think there's no question uh, the Utah Jazz will be a playoff team, 7th or 8th seed, but they will be a playoff team next season. Now, we, we have a couple of Eastern teams here that I, I kind of struggled with, but I went with the Washington Wizards, and then I went with the Chicago Bulls. I think the Wizards are a better team than the Chicago Bulls right now. They got a better head coach, an upgraded head coach in Scott Brooks. I thought uh, Randy Whitman, or was it Randy Whitman or Pittman? And Randy Whitman was horrible. I predicted that the Washington Wizards would miss the playoffs this season. You can go back to my preseason predictions. I predicted this and I had this. Now, yes, Bradley Beal was injured, but I knew it was going to happen, mainly because Kevin Whitman was a horrible head coach, and I knew that coming in. So with that said, they have an upgraded head coach. Bradley Beal still there. Otto Porter getting better. Kelly Oubre, the guy they drafted out of the 2015 NBA draft out of Kansas. He's looking good in the summer league. You have some other guys uh, in the front court. They signed Ian Mahimi in free agency. I like that team better than the Chicago Bulls who have Wade and then have Rajon Rondo. I, I like their bench. I like Bobby Portis and Doug McDermott and Bob, you know, other guys that they have coming off the bench, Nikola Miritich. But I think I just trust the Wizards a little bit more right now. But these are the two teams that will be fighting for the eighth seed. Maybe if the Bucks or Heat can challenge a little bit, but I really think these are the two teams. Then we move on to the Dallas Mavericks. Now, I think the Mavericks will still be competing for a playoff spot next season, mainly because Rick Carlisle is still a really good head coach, and they really have a very similar roster uh, to what they had last year, but guys are getting old. Okay, Dirk's getting old. Darren Williams is getting old. Justin Anderson, I want to say, I was a big Justin Anderson fan coming out of college. I thought he was going to be a low-end starter in the league. He's not quite ready to take the mantle yet. So I think they dipped down a little bit, maybe about 35 wins, but that still puts you about 18 on these rankings. Number 19, the Miami Heat. This is assuming that Chris Bosh is healthy. If he's not, they're going to go down, down, down. Boy, they're going to go down. 20, the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think they're going to take a pretty big jump. They may actually be a playoff team. I just went a little bit conservative because you have to kind of show me first. I mean, they won 29 games. So, you know, you have to show me first before you get into a higher rank than this but I think they really really could be a playoff team next season 21 the Milwaukee Bucks it's tough to say with the Bucks I mean they were a really solid and strong playoff team the season before this and then this season they weren't very good and they were pretty healthy so I mean Jabari Parker played more games this season than he did last and they were worse so you know what's going on there I'm not really sure can't really tw uh, trust it Thon Maker looks like he could be something I was completely wrong on that well we'll see yeah had 10 fouls in 30 minutes. I thought that was horrible, but I'll have a whole video on the Summer League once the Summer League ends, by the way, so stay tuned for that. But we'll see with the Bucks. I have to be in a wait and see. This is like the wait and see range. The Heat, the Timberwolves, the Bucks, and also the, the Charlotte Hornets, who I have ranked to 22nd. Yes, you were a playoff team last year. 
but you lost Al Jefferson, who, yeah, okay, isn't very good. You replaced him with Roy Hibbert, who was literally the worst starting center in the NBA last season. He's done. He's lazy. He doesn't care. It's a horrible downgrade for the Charlotte Hornets. And you say Michael Kidd Gilchrist is coming back healthy, and I respond telling you who cares because I think you were better without Michael Kidd Gilchrist last season. You're really going to go as far as Kemba Walker takes you, and he can take you pretty far because he really ascended his game to a next level next season, or I mean last season, but man, I just, I really don't see it with the Charlotte Hornets, but you're in the wait and see range. Also wait and see the Denver Nuggets. Uh, this is a team that drafted Jamal Murray, and he's looked pretty good. Emmanuel Moutier has looked really good in the one summer league game he played. He looked really good. It looked fantastic. I'm still on the record saying he's going to be an all-star in this league, so look out for that. But man, it's tough right now to say you're going to ascend to that playoff team. I can't do it. You have a nice pair of centers in Nikola Jokic and Yusuf Nurkic and Kenneth Reed. But you just need more stars. Those aren't stars, man. You really don't have one right now. Moutier is ascending. But I think you really need to have a star to be considered to be a playoff team. Or you need to just have a well-rounded out roster like maybe the Utah Jazz. But you're not the Utah Jazz right now. So to me, you're only 23 right now, but we'll see how Murray and Moutier and your kitchen, no and, and all these weird names, how they all uh, progress in the future. Phoenix Suns, yeah, th these next two teams, I know people are going to be pissed, but you can just get over it. All right, Phoenix Suns at 24, look. All right, I, I can't trust Eric Bledsoe to be healthy. Usually, I like to assume health here, but if you can't stay healthy, then no, I'm not assuming health for you. He's not going to stay healthy. Now, Devin Booker looks good. You know, he's been in the summer league. He's been playing well in summer league. Okay, good. Uh, Brandon Knight, pretty good player. Ooh, and these power forward duo might actually be something for you guys i think you're gonna win over 30 games but man i don't know how you can argue that you're better than any of the teams that i've mentioned thus far i i'd love to hear arguments let's hear in the comments below because i know you're gonna have a problem with this but I, I can't wait to hear this argument oh and i know the orlando magic fans will be pissed because they're sitting at number 25 look i hated the victor oladipo trade if you wanted to tell me that Serge Ibaka is a better player than victor oladipo i disagree with you but okay let's go with that for a second so, even if you say he's better, he's slightly better, okay? Ever so slightly. So then, what do you do? You also throw in your 11th draft pick, which is DeMontis Sabonis, a solid guy at the next level. And you also trade Ursan Ilyasova, a really good bench player, a guy that averaged 10 points off of the bench. It's a bad trade. It's a horrible trade. I don't like Scott Skiles. Is he still there? I don't even know if he's still there. He should still be there. I'm not a big Scott Skiles fan. I'm not a big Alfred Payton fan. I think he's a nice passer, a nice defender, but nothing, nothing more. I mean, he can drive and finish a little bit, but I, I don't trust the magic. I'm sorry, I don't. 25. 26, the New Orleans Pelicans. I mean, I'm completely off of the New Orleans Pelicans bandwagon. I picked the New Orleans Pelicans to make the playoffs the year that they did, which I believe was the 2014-15 season. I predicted before the season this team is making the playoffs. Why? Because Anthony Davis was going to lead them there. And they had all these idiots like Drew Holiday and Tyreek Evans and all these guys that could carry them enough to get to the playoffs. But now I'm not buying any of that crap. I think that they're done, mainly because Alvin Gentry stinks. I think he's horrible. I think he's proven to be horrible, a horrible coach at the next level. Buddy Heald, I like but he's just a little inefficient right now. He's going to have struggles adjusting to the NBA level of defense. And I don't think he's going to be very efficient this year in his rookie season. So I think you're looking at the Pelicans being one of the worst teams in the league. 27, you have the Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, I'm a Laker fan. This is not bias here. There's only one team. I know the fans of this team are going to be pissed, but I have arguments ready to go. Look, D'Angelo Russell is going to average, I think, over 19 points per game this season, maybe even over 20. He looks really good in summer league. Brandon Ingram's going to take time. He may only average 12 or 13. Julius Randle, probably only 14 or 15. So they still need to develop. It's going to take time. But just sit back and wait. Sacramento Kings at 28. Look, the Kings right now are horrible, guys. They're, they are so bad. You, see, these next two teams I'm about to talk about, it, it's so... 
it, it, it's so ridiculous how bad these teams are to me. Actually, the next three, really, but at least one of them has hope in terms of draft picks, specifically in the 2017 NBA draft. All right, so the Kings are horrible. I mean, they're absolutely horrible. In, in Summer League, you know, they, they're drafting two guys a year. So they drafted Scalabissier and Giorgis Papagiannis in the wrong order, by the way, because they should have drafted Labissier first, and then maybe you'd get some sort of credit for me, but whatever. So they draft both of these punks in the Summer League, and currently, Jorges Papagiannis stinks, and Scalabissier is okay, and that's their team because they really don't have anything. They are literally starting bench players at four out of five positions on their roster. You're talking about Darren Collison. Yeah, nice player. He's a sixth man at best. They're starting Ben McLemore. Bleh. They're starting Matt Barnes. Eesh. And they're starting DeMarcus Cousins. Okay, good. And Willie Clarystein, who still needs to develop. They haven't won a game in the summer league. I mean, dude, they're so bad. I mean, they're, they're so bad. DeMarcus Cousins is your only hope. And man, as he would say, Lord, give me strength. We move on to 29. Another team starting bench players. Jared Jack. Jeremy Lin. I don't care which one of them starts. One of them will. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who doesn't have a jump shot to his name. Uh, I don't even know who they're starting at shooting guard. Ooh, the baby, uh, is it Boban or is it Bogdan? Oh, it's Bogdan. Bogdanovich. You know, they're starting who at power forward? Who cares? They stink. And they don't even have a draft pick to hold on to. It's to say, well, at least we can have Josh Jackson or or Harry Giles next year. Same goes for the Sacramento Kings. Because for some reason, these stupid teams decided, hey, we don't need draft picks. Let's get Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. Wow. I mean, literally, I mean, I, enough. And then we have the Philadelphia 76ers. And I really wanted to put the 76ers over the Brooklyn Nets. But then I went to the Sixers roster and what did I see? You guessed it. Bench players starting, Jared Bayless, Nick Stauskas, you know, and all these other clowns, Robert Covington. I mean, are you kidding me? I, I don't think Robert Covington can even make the Golden State Warriors at this point. I mean, it, it's just, these teams are so bad. And Ben Simmons, I really like Ben Simmons, and I still do right? But I think he's looking, and I kind of saw this, you know, my five-year projection for Ben Simmons when I made my scouting report was 21 points per game. That was my five-year projection, and I said, because I don't think he really possesses that 25 point per game and above ability, and now I'm thinking, man, I'm not sure he can average more than 17. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not, I'm not saying, but he kind of just looks like a 6'10 Jason Kidd, he doesn't really look like, uh, you know, a a volume score at this point. Now, Jason Kidd is very valuable now. Hey, he's very valuable, but he's not shooting over 50%. He just gets fouled. The jump shot's coming, but slowly. You know, I just don't think he's going to be a very volume scorer at the next level, especially his rookie season. So with that said, the Sixers are still the worst team in the league. So, you know, the Brooklyn Nets can get away with that for now. But, man, it wouldn't surprise me if the Nets are the worst team in the league. They won the lottery, but oh wait, hey, we're Boston Celtics. We have your the right to swap picks, and we're gonna exercise that option. Oh man. So there you go. My 2016 NBA power rankings. It can be found down below just in case you didn't hear anything that I just said. So there you go, the MJ Take here on the Sports Fan Entertainment YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe for more sports opinions here on the best sports opinion YouTube channel that YouTube has to offer. I was kind of redundant, but whatever. And until next time, I'm signing off. Peace.